Saved by the Bell, Malcolm in the Middle, Glee, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, and JR's favorite, Young Sheldon. School is a popular theme in TV shows and movies, and on today's Plain English, we'll talk about what life is really like in school in the United States. Is it like what you see on TV? You'll find out today. Hi there, everyone. I'm Jeff, and this is Plain English, where we help you upgrade your English with stories about the world. And this summer, we're focusing on American daily life and culture. And listen, not everyone in the U.S. is big and grown up like Jr. Some Americans are still growing up, and we want to include school life. In our summer lessons, today's story and Monday's story are about what it's like to go to school in the United States. In the second half of today's lesson, I'll show you the English phrasal verb "spread out." This is lesson number six ninety-seven of Plain English, so that means you can find the full lesson. At plainenglish.com/slash six nine seven. Thanks to Jr. Today we're going to talk about a typical school day, and we'll focus on what we call middle school and high school. Say from about age ten. To about age eighteen, the school day is about eight o'clock a.m. to two o'clock or three o'clock p.m. The older students start earlier. The younger students start and finish later. But eight to two, eight to three, is a good average of the school day for most kids. Let's start with how students get to and from school. Most ride a big yellow school bus. American families like their single-family detached houses, and many parents, when they have kids, they decide to move to the suburbs. Now, the suburbs and the smaller towns. Are spread out, so schools are usually far away from where kids live. Now, most of the time, you can't walk to school, and most suburbs don't have sidewalks anyway. Most suburban towns run school buses that pick kids up in the morning and drop them off at night. The school bus is usually free. Kids wait at the end of their driveways or at the end of their streets. At school, most students are assigned to a classroom called their home room class, and that's the classroom they go to in the morning. That's where teachers take attendance. Pass out announcements and take care of other administrative matters. They might meet there again at the end of the day too. A teacher leads that classroom, but no teaching really happens there. That's just the first place that kids go in the morning. Schools usually have bells that ring in the hallways and classrooms to signify the beginning of the day and the changing of class periods. And when the bell rings for the first class, students begin to follow their daily schedule of classes. Every school does it a little differently, but in most places. The students follow a daily schedule of classes in about forty-five minute increments. They might have five or six of those per day. 
And the students move from classroom to classroom as they go to their different subjects during the day. Each class has anywhere between 15 and 25 students. Each class has one teacher, though some schools have the budget for an assistant to work in some classrooms. What do kids study? There's math and science. A class called social studies is usually about history, culture, politics, things like that. Younger students take reading classes. Then they advance to writing and grammar, sometimes called language arts. Older students take literature classes. At about age 12 to 14, most kids start to take a foreign language. The most common are Spanish and French. Only a small minority of students take other languages, but German, Russian, Italian, and Chinese are sometimes available. As a general rule, middle school kids take all the same classes unless they need extra help or struggle in one subject. But in high school, some students might be invited to take classes called honors classes. These advanced classes cover the same subjects, but they go at a faster pace and they cover more ground in a year. So, for example, I was good at literature, but not good at all in science. So I was in honors literature classes, but not honors science classes. In their last year or two, students can take an even more advanced curriculum called Advanced Placement Classes, or AP Classes. Why would you take the hardest classes? Besides being interesting and motivating, these advanced classes help in applications to universities. Schools offer non-core subjects too. These might be only for a quarter or half the year. These are subjects like music, art, and health. Most high schools offer electives. These are optional classes that students take to fill a free period. Everyone is required to fill the period, but they can choose what classes to fill it with. Electives might be woodworking, marketing, computer programming, nutrition, film, astronomy, journalism, robotics, religion, or personal finance. Not every school offers all of these, but most schools offer a handful of choices like this. Assignments are usually graded on a 100-point scale. The scale roughly aligns with letter grades, with A being the best and F being the worst. Most schools these days report grades using an online system, so parents can check the progress of their kids and monitor their assignments and grades. High schools calculate something called a grade point average. This is like a weighted average of all a student's grades during their entire four years of high school. And this can be competitive too. At the end of high school, all students in a school are ranked by their cumulative grade point averages, so there's no hiding your school performance. In most public schools, 
students are assigned books for each class at the beginning of the year. It's usually just one book per subject to keep things simple. The books are free, but it's the student's responsibility to return the books in decent condition at the end of the year. Teachers also supplement the books with online or other resources. The school day includes some time out of the classroom too. All schools are required to have physical education, gym class. There's a gym teacher, and there are a variety of activities depending on the weather and the time of year. But this time can be used for team sports like basketball and volleyball, or it can be for activities like running, stretching, or climbing a rope. Oh, one more thing the length of the school year. It's a little different in every state. But most schools are open 180 days per year. Most schools open from about the end of August, beginning of September, until about the beginning of June. Now, class is only one part of the school experience. So on Monday, we'll pick the topic up again and talk about what kids do. When they're at school, but not in class. This will be about the unstructured part of the school experience lunch, recess, sports, after school activities, things like that. Here's a phrasal verb for you spread. Out. Spread out is something you can be or something you can do. Let's start with spread out as a property. In both cases, the idea is that a thing, people or things, things are not clustered closely together. There is a lot of space in between individuals. In the glory days of the big indoor regional mall, each mall had a food court, and all the restaurants would be clustered around a central eating area. They're not building malls like this anymore. In newer malls, the restaurants are spread out throughout the mall. That means they're not all clustered together in the same area. They're distributed one by one in different spots in the mall with a lot of space in between each one. Sometimes, if you go to a park, there's a picnic area. And in one park, you might see a lot of picnic tables. Clustered together. But in another park, the picnic tables might be more spread out. There might be more space in between each table to give each group more room. If you describe a city or a place as spread out, it generally means there's a lot of space between the buildings. Many American small towns and suburbs are very spread out. They developed in the age of the car, so the houses didn't all have to be grouped around the center of a town. Where I grew up in Connecticut, for example, there was a lot of space between the houses, and our town. Had about 12,000 people in it, but we were all spread out. There were no tall buildings. There were very few apartments. 
Almost every family lived in a detached house with a yard and plenty of space around it. So as a result, you couldn't really walk anywhere in my town. The streets didn't have sidewalks. It would take forever to walk anywhere, and it really wasn't safe. When I was a kid, one of my schools was about six kilometers away. Kids can't walk that far to school. So we all had to take the school bus. The town was too spread out. Denser places like Chicago, for example, or the very closest suburbs are different. In those areas, there are a lot of houses one right next to another, with apartment buildings or duplex houses mixed in. So these areas are not spread out, and in cities and the closest in suburbs, students do walk to school because their towns are not very spread out. So that's spread out as a property. How about spread out as an action? Let's say you're a yoga instructor and you're giving an outdoor yoga class. You get to the spot of the class, and you see your students all talking to one another. Now you want to get started with some stretches. The students will be extending their arms and legs, bending forward and back. You don't want them clustered closely together. So you might tell them, "Spread out." It's time to start, and in this case, spread out is a command. It's a request. It means move around and put more space in between yourself and the other people. Don't group and gather and cluster together. Spread out so we all have room to stretch. And start. Are you a visual learner? I'm not really a visual learner, but sometimes it helps to spread out all the information I have on a huge table. There were times at work when I was doing a big project. There was a lot of information to keep track of: documents, maps, notes, pictures. Stuff like that, and it just helped to see it all at once. So sometimes I go to a conference room and spread out all my materials on a big table. So I'd walk in with a stack of papers in my hand, then I would spread them out on the table, and the papers would cover the full table, and that's spreading the papers out. And that is all for us here at Plain English. This was lesson number six ninety seven. So remember to find the full lesson resources, the transcript, translations, quizzes, practice area, all that stuff at plainenglish dot com slash six nine seven. Coming up on Monday, there's a lot more to the school experience. Than just learning in the classroom, and that's what we'll be talking about in the next lesson: sports, after-school activities, clubs, lunches, things like that. That's on Monday's Plain English. See you then.